And this young lady that's coming up next for the spoken word, she ha uh, leads a Bible study, Joyful Black Christians. Um, Thursday at 9 at 7, at 7 p.m. So if you guys are looking for somewhere to, to, to study a word with a group of young people on this campus, see Christina afterwards. And she's going to bring us a spoken word selection right now. Hello? Oh, can you guys hear me? Yeah. It's on? Okay. Um, my name's Lou. Can you hear me now? Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'm just honored to be before you guys and share the spoken word. I remember when um, Kenny came to me in the fall and he was telling about his vision for the revival on campus, and it's just so beautiful to see it manifesting and just beginning here tonight. Amen. The name of my poem is um, Sunday Christians, and it incorporates my personal testimony of just growing in the church. I'm sure, like a lot of growing up in the church, like a lot of you probably have, but I never truly knew God. And so, just um, like the Bible says, a lot of people say, Lord, Lord, but they're not going to enter the kingdom of heaven. And so, um, it's just about truly having an encounter with God. If procrastination were an arts, my life would be its grand masterpiece. And the first thing on my list to do, absolutely last, was to surrender to God and give him my keys. You see, I didn't want Jesus to take the wheel of my life and have control. I didn't even want to ride shotguns, so I stuffed and squeezed them in the back of my trunk. But I let him out every once in a while, you know, when I needed something. Because I wanted to have a balanced life. I thought I could experience the things of this world, but still be one with Christ. So every Sunday I'd worship and praise on my knees. But come Monday through Saturday, I live how I please. My first two years of college, I lived oh so hypocritically. I was the absolute and finest epitome of being lukewarm. I was what you call a Sunday Christian. They have the mentality that Monday through Saturday, my life is my own. But I'll do God a favor and go to church on Sunday Christians. They give their life weekly to God, but just for one day Christians. They party it up, hook up, and live it up. But wake up and sing hallelujah, but just on Sunday, Christians. A lot of the times their lives can be the craziest. They claim to know Jesus and love him, but they bear the same fruits of an atheist. You see, I needed a reality check. Why would any unbeliever want to love and serve my God if I wasn't even doing it? I mean, how ironic that even the demons tremble and believe. Being a Christian is more than just going to church on Easter, Christmas, and New Year's Eve. It's more than singing in the choir and saying your prayers every night. It's about becoming less and less of yourself and more and more like Christ. Because I had tradition, practice, and religion, but I did not have Christ. I said I had tradition, practice, and religion, but I did not have Christ. And life without Christ is like a car with no gas. You might go somewhere if you get out the back and push, but your shit certainly won't last. You see, the matter is urgent, and there's no time to sugarcoat it. Some of you have a firm grip on your own life when Christ is the one who needs to control it. First, you need to get your vision blurred. So when you look in the mirror, you no longer see yourself, your imperfections, your desires, but you begin to see the living word. Because being a Christian isn't a light switch in which you can turn on and off every once in a while. It's a consuming and ever-growing lifestyle, not just some title or label. God's word is re relevant, real, and living, the furthest thing from old sayings and fables. Now, like I was, maybe some of you are stuck and caught in the days, procrastinating, saying, yeah, 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 one day I'll get serious and eventually get saved. But right now, I'm young, and I just want to have some fun and experience the world. But if anyone loves the world, the love of God is not in him, and this world is passing away. That's why there's no better time than today than to fully give your own self away. Now, some of you might be sitting there labeling me some Christian fanatic, someone way out of touch with society and reality, just another radical who takes their faith in God's word to the extreme. Huh. But if I am extreme, huh. it's only because I've been redeemed and I'm extremely grateful for it and extremely burdened to tell you the truth at any and all costs. Even if I must get ostracized, penalized, taunted, teased, and despised, I'll just keep my eyes on the cross Woo! and remember that the world hated Christ first and everything he went through is incomparably worse. 
So I'm taking the muzzle off my mouth and removing these chains of fears and Tim Tebowing my way to the crowd of haters to boldly proclaim the gospel because the end times are near. And if you don't quite catch my drift or understand what I mean, simply refer to Romans 1.16 because I can't help but be emphatic about my spiritual mathematics. I pray that me and everyone else here begin to subtract themselves from God's divine equation and add more and more of his will. And that the divide between Christians and the world become undeniably real. Because as Christians, some of you look just like the world. You try to blend in, fit in, and stay in touch. But as soon as one individual boldly stands up for Christ, people tell them they're doing too much. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. I'm not here to passively appease you, entertain you, or show you a good time. I use the spoken word, these phrases and rhymes, to stimulate and hopefully penetrate your hearts and minds because I am a fisherman. A fisher of men, the one who seeks to catch and hook you back into your Heavenly Father. I'm not simply here to get my BA, but to actually be a light on this campus, fearing God and not man, allowing my lifestyle to be my greatest testimony at hand. And if you're sitting there and one if you're sitting there wondering, but why? It's because my life is not my own, it belongs to the Most High. And I dare you to move and get the ball rolling with me and together we'll create a domino effect and knock down the status quo and erect a new generation with an eternal mindset. Woo! One that recognizes that life on earth is simply trial run for eternity. So let's embrace our role as ET and alienate ourselves from the things of this world and make, God, and make serving God our first and not absolute last resort because Jesus came and paid for our sins you can call it child support <laughs> now, some, now some of you might be sitting there thinking I'll get my life right and then come to Christ but you got it all backwards come now and he'll make you right make you right and holy and perfectly blameless that's not a maybe or a might but a guarantee because if Christ can recreate me, a person whose life which was drowned in utter hypocrisy, he can certainly transform each and every one of you, no matter what you've done. Because now is the time to surrender to God's Son. Our lives are like vapors. And the day is going to come sooner than you think when you get to meet your Maker. And you'll probably say, Jesus, it's so good to see you. <laughs> and he's going to respond one of two ways. Well done, my faithful servant. Or depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never even knew you. So now's the time to be about God's mission. Amen. Today we need to take the church beyond the physical building and be more than just some Sunday Christians. Amen. Thank you.